Well, the energy world is watching Denmark with the World Climate Talks set for December in Copenhagen. Denmark is believed to be a pioneer in the development of commercial wind power, providing an estimated 20 percent or nearly 20 percent of electricity production. Nearly half the world's turbines are produced by Danish manufacturers like Vestas. Well, a new report out by a Danish think tank, Sipos, disputes Denmark's claim to wind fame. Hugh Sharman is founder of Incoteca of Denmark, an international energy consulting firm, and he is co-author of this report. He believes that Denmark's wind superiority is founded on a myth. Rob Gramlich is senior vice president for public policy at AWIA. He believes this report makes misleading and false claims about wind power in Denmark. He is uh, with us uh, today. Both gentlemen, welcome to the show. We appreciate having you on. Now, Hugh, you are here uh, on a tour this week to explain the conclusions of your study. And you say the statement that Denmark does derive 20 percent of its electricity from wind uh, overstates matters. And actually, that figure is closer to 5 percent and averages 10? Uh, what I actually say is that the consumption of uh, electricity in the uh, Denmark's consumption of electricity is between 5 and 10 percent. Uh, recent average uh, 2008 was 12 percent of wind energy. Mm -hmm. The rest was all exported. And so we don't count the wind energy that's exported? Oh, the wind energy that's exported, of course, is sold into the spot market. And uh, it's sold invariably for a price at less than the cost of production. OK, so Rob, you say that the, the uh, IER's own report says Denmark does generate the equivalent of this nearly 20 percent uh, of demand by wind. Right. So I don't really understand the difference here. Are we arguing about the difference between 20 percent and 19 percent? Uh, and if we're just changing the math based on exports and disallowing exports, what's wrong with exporting power? That's how the electric power system operates. California gets power from the northwest and vice versa, depending on the day or the season. The difference uh, here being Denmark is a tiny country that is part of a, a, hu a huge European grid. Correct. So the benefits are still there in, in our view. Uh, Denmark's experience is a great example for the United States. Uh, there are uh, thousands of jobs, around 30,000 jobs in, in Denmark and around 85,000 jobs here. What can be done in Denmark can be greatly expanded upon here in the U.S. We have 85,000 people working in, in wind now and we, can, we have almost a thousand-fold wind resource uh, uh, more than Denmark does. So. But Hugh, you say that the model of Denmark shows that, uh, that wind doesn't work. No, I didn't say that. I said wind uh, can work. It, can, it was built only to uh, reduce coal consumption and CO2 emissions. It doesn't provide any firm capacity. So is it giving value for money? And uh, if, if, in fact, all the wind that we pay very expensively for were reducing coal and CO2 emissions, then it would be uh, fulfilling the requirements that were set up for, for building the capacity in the first place, but it isn't doing that. And you say that um, wind power exported from Denmark does not, save on, on, does not save on fossil fuel consumption or CO2 emissions? No, it doesn't. And you disagree with that? I disagree. There are uh, a lot of carbon emissions in Denmark and a lot of carbon emissions in Scandinavia uh, broadly in uh, Nordpool. Uh, Finland, uh, Sweden, and Norway uh, have carbon emissions, and the wind power is part of that broader market, and it's displacing emissions. I mean, this is, this is the latest in a concerted PR campaign with uh, studies uh, and uh, coordinated media and lobbying uh, uh, from the, the opponents of clean energy. Uh, so it's, it's, not, uh, it's, it's not anything new in our view. And so I, I'm not an opponent of clean energy. And uh, the energy we, or the electricity we sell to Sweden and Norway doesn't reduce CO2 emissions because they're CO2 neutral uh, countries anyway. Sweden is 50 percent uh, hydro and 50 percent nuclear, and uh, Norway is more or less 100 percent hydro. So electricity we send north doesn't save CO2 emissions. But I think you would agree that, that uh, it depends on the resource mix. And in the United States, when we have 70 percent of our power from coal and, and gas, uh, that uh, wind will be displacing that resource. I completely agree with you. Okay, now the, the question is, is, it, the is, it, is it economic? Okay, so that's the big question. It's, it's, it's about economics. Well, let's talk about economics and we'd be happy to do that. The great advantage of wind is that you know the cost up front. When you put the wind farm uh, in, in place, uh, you have the full cost known up front in the contract. With no other resource, do you know that? You could achieve a certain uh, penetration and all your wind power 
will have the benefic uh, beneficial effect of reducing uh, fossil fuels and CO2 emissions. Above a certain fraction, then things get very complicated, as we found in Denmark. Uh, we cannot physically use all the wind power that we produce. So I agree, we produce 20%, the equivalent of 20% of our consumption, but we don't actually consume it because it really is much more complicated than uh, my, my colleague here believes. Okay. Also, tell us about um, uh, the amount of government subsidies that go to support the wind industry. It, it isn't government subsidies. The government actually imposes charges and taxes on the Danish consumer, the household consumer, and they hand that money directly over to support the uh, wind turbine fleet. So the wind turbine owner has no risk whatsoever. Um, if the market price uh, is high, then the subsidy is lowered, and if the market price is low, the subsidy is increased. And uh, the, the uh, wind turbine owner is in a very fortunate position of, of being sure of a stable price, more or less, forever. So what is your message that, that you are bringing here, that, the, that if the, the U.S. wind industry should not follow this sort of model? No, I'm saying uh, it would be inappropriate to uh, compare the um, United States of America with, with Denmark, and Denmark doesn't represent a model um, that m my colleagues in the AWA can uh, uh, claim is, is, is replicable. I it's just, uh, I mean, the American Wind Energy Association cites the de case of Denmark so frequently that one imagines that they think that there is something that you can replicate, but really there isn't anything you can replicate. There, isn't, there can't be much, Rob. I mean, it's so, so incredibly different than, uh, than here. We cite a lot of examples. I, I guess we have cited Denmark, and we're happy to cite that. We're happy to cite Spain, Germany, uh, Texas. I mean, we don't have to go outside this country mm. uh, or the, the, the Midwest or California uh, or the Northwest. Uh, we have wind development all over the, the country now, and we have you know, the earlier claims about reliability have been proven false. Uh, the earlier claims about the technology not working obviously are long gone. Uh, the uh, issues with uh, birds and bats, we're sponsoring a lot of research, but we're going to the right places and those are being addressed. Uh, so the, the industry is, is growing very rapidly and we're, we're pleased with our progress. We don't have to point to Europe anymore. Well, but it can't grow beyond, say, 10% without having quite high levels of storage. I mean, we have storage. It's called Denmark and Sweden. I'm sorry, Norway and Sweden. Right, because they export it. Yeah. Um, you, you need vast amounts of electricity storage to have a high penetration of wind power. You don't need that electricity storage with a very low penetration of wind power you have in the USA right now. Okay. Well, that was disproven by the, the Bush administration's uh, Department of Energy report on getting 20% of U.S. wind by 2030. Uh, no storage was required for those 300,000 megawatts, uh, and in many regions of the U.S., uh, they're, they're uh, looking at high penetration levels, and most of it can be accomplished by operating the grid differently, and the nice thing is we have a vast, diverse uh, network uh, with all sorts of generation that can be ramped up and down. Storage would be great if the costs can come down, and, and that'll be, uh, I'm sure, part of the future in the U.S. and, and uh, Europe, but that, that's uh, that's... That won't be a long-term barrier either. You've just quoted the uh, Californian case, and California has huge ambitions for vast amounts of storage, and it knows it cannot achieve the high penetration of wind power without that storage. Let's get to a high electricity prices. The Danes pay some of the highest uh, across Europe, and do you, do you pin that uh, on wind? No, not necessarily. I mean, the Danish government has, in its wisdom, decided to tax uh, electricity consumption by consumers in order to drive down consumption by consumers. Um, they have built wind power in order to expand the production of electricity. So now they're caught in the middle. They have really depressed wind power or electricity consumption to a very minimum and they've created a vast surplus of electricity production in Denmark, most of which requires to be exported. And the wind portion of that is exported invariably at a loss. And Rob, you say a lot of this uh, higher, higher electricity uh, costs come from taxes. 
Uh, yeah, and, and who's, who in the U.S. is worried about exporting our wind power? I mean, that's just not an issue here. This that's report, one of other big to, the, between to the extent there's anything true in this report, which is you know bought and paid for by the opponents of clean energy, uh, it's not applicable to our country. We're going to consume any wind energy. Nobody is disputing that. Any wind energy that is produced uh, will be consumed here. We may import some from Canada and Mexico, and that's that's fine. We're going to do a lot of trading of power. Uh, traded power does count. People mm -hmm. consume those those electrons. That's the way uh, power has always been developed in this country. Uh, so we can't we can't discount exported or traded power. Uh, it's valuable. So this study was commissioned by the IER Institute for Energy Research, and this is this funded by the fossil fuel interests? I have no idea. You don't I, know. I, I I I'm paid by CPOS in Denmark. Okay, I and they're they're part they're part of this report as well. Yeah, they were, they were my, uh, as you can see, they're the publisher. Right. But you're unaware of, of the, uh, you're unaw unaware of the funders? I'm, I'm aware of the IER, of course, um, but the relationship between IER and CPOS is not my business. I've, I've been studying this business of Danish wind for five or six years, and I'm very fortunate to have a chance to, to actually provide some ana analyzed results. And by the way, the reaction in Denmark is, is rather positive to the report in general. By businesses, consumers, by? By Danish institutions, yes. But your general conclusion in coming here uh, and your message <coughs> here is the U.S. should not be so enamored with this particular model. Precisely. And your final conclusion? Well, there's a clear reason why this is being, uh, why you know, Hugh is uh, up on the Hill uh, in Congress mm -hmm. and being brought to many congressional offices. And it's not no criticism of him personally, but there is a campaign behind this effort and it has clear incentives and anybody can Google the, uh, the funding sources and, and uh, we just, everybody, everybody needs to look at what's behind any new reports coming out. Certainly. All right. Mm -hmm. And certainly with the eyes on Denmark, there'll be a lot more attention to the wind industry and uh, all the energy it's industries there. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank you, Hugh Sharman from Incoteco for coming on. Rob Gramlich, good to see you again from OEA. Thanks, Susan. Thank you yeah. both. Well, after the, uh, at the 2009 Frankfurt Motor Show today, four